Hello, lovely internet strangers. In today's episode of the A Squares Corner, I am going to be talking about Tumblr and mental health and why I think Tumblr is responsible for the mess that we're all in now, or at least part of the mess. So my husband sent me this article from EV Magazine. I'm not a fan of EV Magazine, but that is a topic for a whole other video. The article he sent me is titled, Over 50% of liberal white women under 30 have a mental health issue. Are we worried yet? So the article references a Pew Research study that was done in 2020, and the study examined white liberals, moderates, and conservatives, both male and female, and it found that conservatives were far less likely to be diagnosed with mental health issues than those who identified identified as either liberal or even very liberal. And white women suffered the worst of all. White women ages 18 to 29 who identified as liberal were given a mental health diagnosis from medical professionals at a rate of 56.3% as compared to 28.4% in moderates and 27.3% in conservatives. So the article quotes this board certified psychiatrist, Dr. Lyle Rossiter, who says that white liberalism thrives on supposedly championing workers, minorities, the little guy, women, and the unemployed who they continuously see as wronged, cheated, oppressed, disenfranchised, exploited, and victimized with little to no agency of their own, a view that often mutates into the infantilizing and patronizing of certain groups within a narrative, and that the suffering in their minds is inflicted on innocent people by predators and persecutors, big business, greedy capitalists, U.S. imperialists, the oppressors, the rich, the wealthy, the powerful, and the selfish. But, the article says, the champions of these causes, white women in particular, aren't exactly living the liberated utopia they believe we should all be living. The author of this article says that it's unfortunate so many women are facing these kinds of issues and we shouldn't be making fun of them, we should have compassion, but that progressivism is an ideology that supposedly demands equality for all and one that keeps score to an exhausting degree, and that you have to expose the privilege between social classes, races, genders, religions, that you have to constantly monitor all these things, and that's not sustainable behavior, it's not realistic, and it's understandable that in these kinds of environments where you're constantly focusing on problematic issues in the world that anxiety and depression would thrive, especially if you're not taking comprehensive productive action to solve these problems. And because these people tend to focus on verbal violence and microaggressions, they're not focusing on building resiliency against hardship. And we know from the literature that resiliency is an important factor in fighting against depression and anxiety, but progressive ideology encourages its followers to wallow in feeling feeling helpless and like a victim. Instead of, say, empowering them, helping them build self-knowledge, strength of character, etc. So here are my thoughts as someone who has only recently in the past couple of years exited the white women age 18 to 29 demographic, and also as someone who has received a diagnosis of clinical anxiety and has been medicated for such a diagnosis in the past, and has generally struggled with anxiety and depression for as long as I can remember being a person. Although I am in a much better place nowadays. Thank you for asking. So part of me doesn't think that it's necessarily the progressive ideology itself, but also a certain medium that appeared to allow the spread of these ideas. And not just progressive ideas. I still make a distinction between the progressive ideology and social justice and intersectionality, but that's a topic for a whole different video. The point is Tumblr. I love to hate on Tumblr. Former Tumblr user here. I'm 31 years old. Tumblr was founded in 2007 and I was on it from relatively the beginning in 2009. I'm an OG Tumblr user. I was on there early enough to remember Tumblarity, where they used to give you a score as to how popular your Tumblr was until they got woke enough to decide that that wasn't fair, it wasn't nice, it was too competitive, etc. So I got on Tumblr when I was 18, 19. It's always had a majority female user base, and there was a lot of people with mental illness on there. Generally people that felt like they didn't fit in at school or with their family, which definitely described me. And I kind of feel like that's a less common feeling for most conservatives. Most conservatives, whether religion is a huge focal point for their life, have some kind of religious foundation. A lot of them get their conservatism from their family, so their values and their family's values are probably consistent. They're probably part of a religious community community where they feel connected. Whereas I think a lot of liberals, they may or may not be religious. I was raised religious and rejected that religion later on. So the majority of people that got on that site probably did lean liberal. And there was such a huge age range of people on that site from people that were in their 20s and 30s to people that were young teenagers. And people could basically make themselves into an authority based on absolutely nothing. 
So it was the blind leading the blind, especially when it came to mental health issues. There were all these people that had this attitude of like, it's okay that you have anxiety and depression, that you're mentally ill. You don't have to do anything about it. And people just need to accept you for who you are, which was always something that I took issue with. People shouldn't say you're a bad person because you have depression or anxiety, but you still have the ability to be an asshole and you can't just use your mental illnesses as a shield and be like, oh, you can't be mad at me. I'm mentally ill. No, there's something broken about you and you should try to fix it, whether that's through therapy or changing your diet or sleep patterns or using medications or whatever. So these idea pathogens, as Gad Sad would put it, could easily spread in this environment. Like I said, it was a majority female user base and idea pathogens tend to spread easily in female communities. A lot of people don't want to acknowledge it, but you see it happening now in the teenage girl community with the rapid onset gender dysphoria phenomenon. I'm not saying there are no teenagers, that are having legitimate gender dysphoria, but teen girls tend to spread these ideas like wildfire and then grow out of them. I actually saw someone on Twitter talking about something I haven't thought about in a long time, which is that even before I was on Tumblr, in the days of like Live Journal or I was on Zanga, if anyone remembers that, there was these communities of girls with eating disorders and they had all these like terms so they could kind of talk about it without getting potentially flagged or censored. So the names Anna and Mia, ANA and MIA were terms for anorexia and bulimia. And it became like a whole culture, a whole aesthetic. And then when you moved on to Tumblr, there was all the fitspo, so fitness inspiration and thinspo, the thin inspiration content. Way before Instagram, that stuff was happening. What you see on Instagram now with all the influencers and things like that is just a progression of what was already happening. The internet, whether through blogging sites and now through social media, allows these pathogens to spread. And Tumblr was like this community where parents probably weren't paying attention to what their kids were looking at on Tumblr or posting about. It's just like, oh, I'm just on here like talking about my fandoms and whatever. And no idea that their kids are reading all this crazy shit. You know, when I was in college, this is where I was reblogging and posting all this feminist and misandrist stuff and where I was learning about all this stuff primarily. So they're talking about this age range of women who are 19 to 30 years old because it was 18 to 29 in 2020. So I'm only one year above the top end of that range. And the height of this stuff on Tumblr was around 2014 to 2016. So people around my age probably got on Tumblr when I did, when they were seniors in high school or entering college. But like I said, there was always a younger contingent of people on Tumblr. And I think as it got more popular, younger teens or tweens wanted to be on it even more. So you could have had 12 or 13 year olds in 2014 to 2016 at the height of that stuff on Tumblr, who then grew up and never had the experience that I did and met my husband who helped me snap out of all of that. And yeah, I remember when I was a Tumblr feminist, when I was an intersectional feminist, social justice type, my mental health was never worse than when those were the beliefs that were possessing me, so to speak. Especially because I was a Tumblr feminist that there was this like Tumblr feminist media criticism kind of thing where, you know, you can't just enjoy anything anymore. You just, everything you're watching, you're just like, looking for something problematic and having a chip on your shoulder about it and feeling oppressed and victimized and needing to go rant about it. And it's like this constant anxiety and stress that's just like churning through you. And not just media, but things people say in conversation, in conversation with you directly, that you overhear people saying. It's exhausting mentally and it does keep you mired in these stressful feelings, negative feelings, anxiety feelings, etc. But like I said, there were so many people on Tumblr who started out having mental health issues or being kind of that vulnerable population of people who were bullied or didn't have any friends or didn't fit in or had their parents tell them that they weren't like living up to their expectations or whatever. And then finding those ideologies can make you temporarily feel better because it tells you that like none of this is your fault and gives you like an enemy to be mad at. But at the end of the day, when you're so focused on that, like they said in the article, you're not really like 
like taking productive action. And so no matter what you may tell yourself consciously, like subconsciously, your soul or whatever knows that you're not actually contributing to society or you're not making a difference or that you're kind of stuck and there's all these things that you should be doing differently or starting to question, okay, I've been like part of this ideology for so long and you know, why do I feel so awful? So I just wanted to comment on this briefly because I think about this topic a lot and I blame Tumblr. So it's not surprising to me that you see this study and those statistics. I also wonder because they just asked people whether they had received a diagnosis, to what extent is that demographic more likely to seek a mental health diagnosis, whether for good or for bad? Like maybe people with mental health conditions in the conservative population are underdiagnosed because their upbringing or their cultural values don't lead them to seek therapeutic or medical options that would be helpful to them. Just a thought. Also, they surveyed a male population in addition to the female population, and we already know from the literature that women in general suffer more from depression for a wide variety of reasons, and possibly one of those contributing factors is that they get more diagnoses because women are more likely to seek medical treatment for not just mental health issues, but anything that's wrong with them. So if there's any former Tumblr feminists out there that want to commiserate with me in the comments, feel free. I still want to make a video someday where I show some example posts of things that I used to reblog on Tumblr and be like, yeah, this is so correct. I believe in this so hardcore with all my being. Hashtag feminism. I'll get to that eventually. So thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe and I will have more content for you very soon.